physics is, it has an additional very, very stringent constraint. The theories actually have to be correct vis-a-vis -vis the universe that we see. I mean, that is the most stringent criterion. There is this phrase which says that my most beautiful theories have been destroyed by ugly facts. The thing is that at the end of the day, irrespective of how beautiful the theory is, it has to actually be able, number one, to explain all known phenomena at that given moment when the theory is proposed, and number two, the theory has to make predictions that can be tested by future experiments or observations. Otherwise, it is not a valid theory of physics. And this is irrespective whether the theory is beautiful or not. I mean, you know, the Ptolemaic model of the solar system was a very good model in that it explained you know, the observations really quite well. It had the problem that it was a little bit too complicated. You know, it had epicycles on, the, on top of other deference, but it, in terms of explaining the observations, it was pretty good. And in fact, even the Copernican model, when it was first suggested, was not much simpler. They also had to add epicycles at the beginning. Uh, to explain everything that was observed. Only later, you know, when we discovered that orbits can be elliptical and so on and, and, and things like that, then we realized that the Copernican model can be much simpler than the Ptolemaic model, which it wasn't initially, but can be made much simpler. And then it became, in my mind, a more beautiful <laughs> theory, yes. Uh, a more beautiful model in the sense that it became simpler, even though it explained the same observations so on. But first of all, they need to explain. So, for example, in the example you mentioned, string theory has been considered as our best attempt to formulating a theory that combines Einstein's general relativity with our best theory of the subatomic world, namely quantum mechanics. It's an attempt to do that. And for now, a good few decades now, has been considered perhaps as our best attempt so far. However, the theory so far has failed to produce testable predictions. So if it remains like that, irrespective how beautiful it is mathematically, it will not be an accepted theory in physics. And indeed, may have even at some level led us astray in some sense, in that very many of the brightest minds followed along that path, which maybe doesn't lead at the end. Now, it will never be without any value, because first of all, some truly remarkable mathematics has been formulated and invented in the context of string theory. And I have very little doubt that many of those concepts and branches of mathematics will turn out to be very fruitful in whatever theory at the end we can come up with, if we can come up with a theory like this. So it's, it's not been a complete waste of time, but it may be that for a while we went in the wrong direction. I don't lament that. I mean, you know, I, I wrote a book called Brilliant Blunders. By brilliant blunders, I mean, you know, when people try to think outside the box or to think outside the mainstream, at least for a while, they may make mistakes. But sometimes these attempts, they lead to breakthroughs. So string theory could have led to breakthroughs. It hasn't so far, and maybe it will never. So maybe it will turn out to be a brilliant blunder.